Hello, everybody. <laughs> Thank you for coming. So this is our first AY of March. And so, yes, before we get started, I'd like to start with some fun Bible trivia. So here we go. All right. So everybody, if you could um, turn your camera on and unmute yourself so that's interactive. Yay. Okay. So, oh no. Sorry, hold on. Question number one. Who was mentioned first to keep the Sabbath? A, God, B, Moses, C, Adam, or D, Abraham? You can just blurt it out if you'd like. A. A? You are correct. <laughs> Good job, friends. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> Question number two. Samson was a blank in Israel. Was it A, priest, B, soldier, C, judge, or D, officer? Somebody else. C. B? C. You're correct. It's oh, B. Right. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, whoever said B. Go on, Kyle. <laughs> All right. What did Jesus do right after he said it is lawful to on the Sabbath to do good or to do evil, to save or to kill? There's, um, there's a clue here in Mark 3, verse 4. But is it, did he cure an apostle, heal a withered hand, let a man die, or heal a blind man? I'm going to guess B. D, heal a blind man? I'm going to say B. You guys say D? Okay. Uh, it's B. He healed a withered hand. Sorry, guys. You guys are doing good so far. <laughs> Question four. Which king was given 15 more years to live? Was it A, Ahaz, B, Ahab, C, Hezekiah, or D, Solomon? Anybody? This one's kind of hard, though, not going to lie. I think, it's, I think it's C. Hezekiah? I think it's Hezekiah. All right. All right. You guys are confident? Wow. Yeah. All right. You're correct. Good job, guys. You guys are Bible experts. Okay. Fill in the blank. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of solemn rest. A blank. Is it a new week, a new beginning, a day of no work, or holy convocation? There's a, there's a clue in Leviticus 23, verse 3, if you guys are stuck. D? All right. Good job. You're correct. Uh, question six. Where did God give the Israelites the Ten Commandments? In Egypt, Canaan, Sinai, or Mount Moriah? C. I think it's C. Good job. Sinai. Okay. Which servant did not receive a blessing in the parable of the talents? It's found in Luke 19, verses 12 to 27. Oh no! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I thought I put like um. Never mind. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna skip that question for now. Um, Jesus said the Sabbath was made for man and blank man for the Sabbath. Was it also? Was it and? Was it not? Or was it as well as? What was that blank? Letter C. Letter C. You're correct. Good job. Question nine. What did God tell Moses to throw into the water at Mara to make the water sweet to drink? It's found in Exodus 15, 22 to 25. Was it a stick? Close, yeah. Basically, it was a piece of wood. <laughs> what? Question 10. Who was the only female judge mentioned in the book of Judges? Was it Ruth, Deborah, Hannah, or Priscilla? Deborah? Not sure. Yes. Good job. Deborah. Question 11. 
fill in the blank. He gives you, but he gives you on the blank day bread for two days. Is it the seventh day, the sixth day, the fifth day, or the first? The sixth. Yes, good job. I see Renz and Rev also doing sign language. Love that. The sixth day. Okay, who was crucified with Jesus? Anybody? You guys need a clue? Okay, <laughs> it's two thieves. Oh, I thought it's I am. Oh, As it says, I am crucified with Christ. Oh, yeah. just kidding. <laughs> you got scared, no. right? <laughs> All right. Well, I guess there's um, different answers to that one. Question 13. What book in the Bible doesn't mention God by name? This one's kind of hard. And there's no clue. You guys can just guess. Give it your best shot. June. Dude, all right. I feel like it's too short. Anybody else have guesses? No? Have a kick. Any book, any book. Lamentations. Lamentations, good guess. Obadiah. Obadiah. Yeah. All right, guys, I'm just going to tell you the answer because I forgot what it was. <laughs> it was Esther. Yeah, I, I didn't believe it, actually, when I first saw this, but I guess so. Question 14. Which Old Testament prophet was sent to heaven in a whirlwind? Was it Elisha, Isaiah, Elijah, or Samuel? He? Yes, it was Elijah. Good job. Question 15. What significant event was done in six days? Creation. Yes, good job, Luigi. Very good. Question 16. What two men in the Bible never died? Enoch and Elijah. Yes. Enoch and Elijah. You guys are so good. Bible pros. How long did Jesus hang on the cross? This one's kind of hard, guys, but here's a clue. Mark 15, 25 to 37. Three hours. Three hours. Good guess. Good guess. But um, it's not. Sorry. <laughs> Five hours. Five hours. We're getting closer. Six hours. Yep, six hours. And, yes. yeah, six hours. Wow. Good job. Whoever said that. Question 18. What two books of the Bible are named after women? Esther and Ruth. Yay. Good job, guys. Question 19. Which apostle was a tent maker? Paul. Paul? Wow, how would you know? I didn't even know this one, to be honest. Okay, guys, this is the last question. What person in the Bible was a fast and furious driver? Second Kings 9 verse 20. You guys can look it up. I don't, I don't, I don't even know this person, actually, but it's kind of a hard question. Jehu, son of Nimshi. He drives oh, like Oh, good job, Jehu. Yes. So thank you for participating in the game, you guys. You guys are all Bible experts. So this is a memory verse from Matthew eleven twenty nine. 29. It is, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, Matthew eleven twenty nine. 29. So as you know, our um, topic for today is about rest, and we have three 
um, presenters today. We have AJ, Renz, and Kyle. But before we um, listen to them, we're gonna hear prayer from, oh, we're gonna hear, yeah, prayer from Arlene. Okay, let us bow our heads for opening prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful day that you have given us to enjoy an AY led by Mario. I'd like to pray for all those who are watching, all those who are listening, please help us to be blessed by this program, help it to go well as according to your will. I'd like to thank you for having a good week and a good rest of the week. And as we live our lives, please protect us and keep us safe. Amen. Maria, we can't hear the audio. Wait, you can't hear it? No. Okay, wait, hold on. How about now? Yeah, it's good now. It's so sweet to trust in Jesus and to take him at his word. Just to rest upon his promise and to know the said the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I prove him for and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus. Shall be 
Thank you guys. Okay, so we'll hand it off now to AJ, who's going to talk about the significance of resting. Hello, everyone. Happy Sabbath. So I'll start off with a um, thing from Bible Gateway. Rest is important to your spiritual walk with the Lord. And many Christians today don't appreciate the value of rest or keeping the Sabbath day holy. Rest allows our mind, body, and soul to renew the start with even more strength and focus. Scripture is filled with prom God's promises to provide rest when we seek him. God is an endless source of peace and strength, and he created us to need him. So for my personal thing about rest, um, after graduating uh, from high school, my classes in college were more of uh, the afternoon. So when I wake up early nowadays, it's kind of weird for my parents because when I had classes, I usually wake up uh, just a few mi minutes or maybe an hour before my classes. Uh, and in a, not having enough sleep, I wouldn't have a clear mind, a lack of motivation to do things, and the feeling of having a weak spirit. The sad thing about um, not having enough sleep, people can die from overworking, but um, what Matthew 11, 28 says to us, that come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. The benefits of sleeping. So for people who are uh, more on creativity, like in photography, videography, music, and all those things, it will help us stimulate more of those, especially that's important to me who works on photography and videography, especially for the church. Um, it helps us stay mentally and emotionally fit. In fact, when people don't get enough sleep, we tend to get moody and entertain negativity, like a sleeping baby who gets usually cranky and irritable, which goes same with grown-ups. Then the common thing for uh, having enough rest is that it improves our health in a lot of ways. And uh, one biggest thing that I've seen or researched about was it actually slows down aging process. Uh, here it says there are several factors that can help slow down aging process and one of them is getting a good night's sleep regularly. A study cited in Huffington Post conducted on premenopausal women aged 30 to 60 found out that sleep deprivation had adverse effects on skin aging. The results were that the researchers found that those who didn't sleep well exhibited more signs of skin aging including fine lines, uneven pigmentations, and reduced skin electricity. The researchers also found that those who enjoy quality sleep were more quick to recover from stressors to the skin, such as sun environmental toxins. So we can see how rest is really important for our bodies. And uh, the topic reminded of, remind me of when Atishine or Ms. Mariano, she challenged my whole class to have uh, eight hours of sleep because most of us were having less than that. Then when completing that challenge, I felt more refreshed than ever before. So there's a lot to do with that um, for our body. So yeah. All right, thank you, AJ. I'm gonna share my screen if that's okay, Mario. Uh, good morning, oh, not good morning, good afternoon, happy Sabbath, everyone. I uh, thank you, AJ, for uh, that talk about the importance of rest. I will be talking about the effects of rest and especially good rest. So 
Raise your hand if you had a good night's sleep last night. Raise your hand. Nice. Now raise your hand if you regularly have a good night's rest. <laughs> no one? Oh, Rev does. Okay. So raise your hand if you're all jealous of Rev. <laughs> I know I am. Oh, yeah. So rest is a topic that a lot of us are familiar with, but sometimes we don't take seriously enough. Some of the harder working ones among us feel like they should be always on the go, 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 and they never take a break. Others of us take breaks so long that we forget to go back to work and we have to sacrifice good rest to catch up. Regardless, rest is something we should all take more seriously before it becomes too late. So yes, I'll be talking about what good rest is, how it affects us physically, mentally, and then a short touch on spiritually. So when we think of rest, what usually pops up in your mind? Answers. Just open up your mic and yell answers. Yes, Luigi. <laughs> Sleep. Sleep? Nice. Anything else? Vacation. Sorry? Vacation. Tissue? Vacation. Oh, vacation. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, but I know that for a lot of us, when we think of rest, we usually think of sleep. And when we think of a good night's sleep, uh, we often think about eight hours. Uh, answer in your head. How many among us have trouble waking up in the morning or usually feel groggy or tired even after a decent sleep? So uh, I'm not going to go in too much detail about it but if you have trouble like i do in the morning i want you to listen closely so we sleep in cycles of about 90 minutes and during those 90 minutes we go through four different stages of depth of sleep and so this first stage here we're sleeping the lightest and then the second stage can you guys see my mouse maybe maybe not yeah yeah, yeah. the second stage uh we are like slowly going into like that lullaby stage. And then uh, third stage, our brain is knocked out and like we're deep sleeping. And then fourth stage, we're kind of light sleeping, not really, but this is when we dream and that's REM sleep. So I want to give you an example of how this is useful. So now that you know that we sleep in about of cycles I uh, said so that we sleep in cycles of about one and a half hours. Let's say you have university classes at 9 a.m. and you want to wake up at, mm, I don't know, 7.30. So you do the math, you go backwards in time, take an hour and a half, an hour and a half, an hour and a half, and say you want to sleep about five cycles of an hour and a half, that's seven and a half hours. You should be in bed with your eyes closed by 12 midnight, right? But it takes about 20 minutes to go to sleep. So by 1140, we should be in our bed without the phone, just trying to uh, trying to nap. And if you do follow this timeline, I'm not going to lie and tell you that you'll always feel great and energetic and excited. Uh, but from what I've felt, I feel a lot less tired. I feel much better in the morning when I sleep in that cycle versus when I wake up in the middle of say stage three. Uh, but good rest doesn't necessarily always mean good sleep, though it's still a big part of it. Uh, good rest also means taking frequent breaks. So during work or while we study, we often try to finish things in one sitting, right? But sitting in one place for too long can negatively affect our performance. And uh, it's recommended that when we do work, say for half an hour, 25 minutes, you take a break every five minutes or for every hour you take 15. And during these breaks, you want to do something that pushes your mind away from your work because when we're always working into something, we're always focused, something called goal habituation occurs and 
we tend to forget or lose track of what we're trying to do and instead uh, like go, on, go off on a tangent, kind of like what I'm doing right now. Uh, but when you uh, take a break, you have this thing called goal reactivation and that helps you, uh, you know, stay on track, even though it sounds kind of kind of weird, like you stop doing something to stay on track, it does work. And so during these breaks, I recommend that you guys get up, get some water, stretch. For example, like I'll, I'll ask you right now, stand up for a bit, stretch. Ah, everyone, everyone stand up. It takes a family. You guys are all slouched against the couch. <laughs> stretch. Ah, just let your blood flow through your body to your brain. I'll give you 10 seconds, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, <laughs> two, one, and down, sit down, sit down. Sit down. So yeah, that is what we should be doing, taking a break every time we're working. And during these breaks, find relaxing activities. Usually when I think of a break from studies, I, I get on my phone and then I uh, look at posts or I read up on the news. That kind of still stimulates your brain in the same way that work does. And I recommend that when you do take a break, it's a complete break. No phone, no gadgets. You just get up, get water, stretch, breathe some fresh air, and uh, let your brain rest for a bit. Now, I'll talk about uh, some of the physical effects. And as most of us know, cardiovascular disease is one of the leading causes of death. And for us Filipinos, we are genetically more likely to develop blood pressure or high blood pressure. And some ways we could deal with this is through our diet, by eating less bagoong and duyo. But studies show that over time, our sleep can also help with high blood. So while you sleep, your blood pressure goes down, your heart and blood vessels a bit of rest. And the less sleep you get, the longer your blood pressure stays up during that 24 hour cycle. They also say that we spend about one third of our lives sleeping. So let's try to make sure that that one third is of high quality. Also during the deep and slow wave part of your sleep cycle, the amount of glucose in your blood drops. And not enough time in this deepest stage means that you don't get that break that allows your body to reset. And it's like, it's like playing music and then leaving the volume turned up, not turning off the speaker while you're not in the room. It will just drain the battery from the speaker, right? That's the same with your body. So your body's, your body's gonna have a harder time responding to your cells needs and blood sugar levels. So allow yourself to reach and remain in this deep sleep and you're less likely to get type two diabetes. Also to help ward off illnesses, your immune system takes this time to identify harmful bacteria and viruses in your body and destroys them. Ongoing lack of sleep changes the way your immune cells work and they may not attack as quickly and you get more sick more often. A good nightly rest now can help you avoid that tired, worn out feeling as well as spending days in bed as your body tries to recover. And uh, there was a large two week study that monitored the development of rhinoviruses, rhinoviruses, not coronaviruses, rhinoviruses after giving people nasal drops with uh, a strain. And they found that people who slept less than seven hours were almost three times more likely to develop a cold than those who slept for more than eight. So if you often get colds or runny nose, ensuring that you get at least eight hours of sleep per night could be very helpful. Also, when you're well rested, you're less hungry and being sleep deprived means that it messes with the hormones in your brain, such as leptin and ghrelin that control appetite. And with those out of balance, you're resistant to temptations of unhealthy foods goes down. And when you're tired, you're less likely to want to get up and move your body or cook or go buy something nice. So together, it's a recipe for putting on pounds. So we should really try to take a break and have good sleep because it will positively affect our body. Now I'll cover some of the effects 
on the mind. AJ touched up on this a bit. I'll just repeat some of what he said. So taking frequent breaks to stand up, get water and walk around gets your heart beating and improves blood circulation like we just did earlier, allowing more oxygen to enter your brain and giving it a little more energy than you would have had if you just stood there sitting. And sleep is also important for various aspects of brain function. This includes cognition, concentration, productivity, and performance. And all of these are negatively, negatively affected by sleep deprivation. A study on medical interns provides a good example. So interns were on a national, or sorry, on a traditional schedule of extended work hours of more than, oh, sorry, with extended work hours of more than 24 made 36% more serious medical errors than interns on a schedule that allowed more sleep. So what this says basically is people who were overworking themselves and not giving their body enough time to rest were hear that 36% more likely to make serious medical errors. So if your doctor doesn't get enough rest, like call them, remind them, tell them, sleep so I could feel better too. Another study found that short sleep can negatively impact some aspects of brain function similar to a similar degree as alcohol intoxication. Now, on the other hand, Having a good sleep has been shown to improve problem solving skills and enhance memory performance of both children and adults. And uh, it sounds normal that it makes sense, right? But studies have been done to make sure that this is real and sleep seems to beget creativity while sleep deprivation strips it away. We know this from anecdotes and from evidence. When people are sleep deprived, certain types of thought seem to be more affected than others. For example, divergent thinking or thinking outside the box in new and imaginative ways seem to be the first things that go away when one is sleep deprived. Whereas convergent thinking, uh, so trying to figure out correct answers on a standardized test, that stays intact. And one study uh, deprived participants of sleep for 32 hours and tested them on various aspects of thinking and people who were sleep deprived the 32 hours performed significantly worse on types, on most types of divergent problems, including fluency, flexibility, and originality. And when you're running low on sleep, you're probably going to have a lot more trouble holding on to and recalling details. That's because sleep plays a big part in learning and memory. And without enough of it, it's tough to focus and take in new information. Uh, so sleep lets your brain catch up. So you're ready for what's next. And it also helps you process your emotions. Uh, studies in neurochemistry show that a good night's rest helps foster mental and emotional resilience. And chronic lack of sleep can also raise the chance of having a mood disorder. And it's likely that if you have insomnia, you're five, in, insomnia, you're five times more likely to develop depression and your odds of anxiety or panic disorders are even greater. And so having a refreshing slumber helps you hit the reset button on a bad day, improve your outlook on life, and be better prepared to meet challenges. And last but not least, I'll just touch on some spiritual effects. I think Kyle might go into more detail into this one. And basically, as we know, today is God's day of rest. It's the Sabbath, and the effects of this on our body is that our mind isn't cluttered with work or say our assignments. We're able to dedicate that whole time with not just our families, but with also our relationship on the Lord or with the Lord. So there's no stress, no nothing. We're able to take a break, you know, take a breather and allow ourselves to enjoy the world that God has created. So those are the effects of good rest. I pass on the mic to Kyle to talk about uh, the significance of the Sabbath. Okay, thank you, Renz. So, what is this? Uh, why did God give us the Sabbath to rest? So, we should go back a little bit and look at the history of the Sabbath. Exodus 31 12 to 18 says that. 
God gave the Sabbath day to keep as a sign between himself and Israel that you may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. By observing the Sabbath, Israel would give a testimony that he was their God and they were his people who would always acknowledge the day on which he rested after finishing creation. It's to our advantage to start with the account of creation in the first and second chapters of Genesis. God created, uh, God created for six days, and the account of each day contained these words, and the evening and the morning were. Each day of creation had boundaries, the evening and the morning, but the seventh day was different in that it had no such boundaries. In a divine way, God reserved the Sabbath with, the, with rest from all his work which he had made. He blessed and sanctified the seventh day centuries before it came before it became the object of the fourth commandment. No other commandment begins with remember, emphasizing to Israel the importance of observing the Sabbath as a day of rest. Just as God observed the first Sabbath, resting from his work of creation, the Jews would observe the Sabbath from sundown on Friday until sundown on Saturday. God said to keep the day holy or set it apart from the other six days in a way like no other nation. It was a day devoted to God, and they should observe it by doing no work. Both the day and the people were set apart. In Exodus 16, when the Israelites wandered the desert before they reached the promised land, God would make bread, uh, specifically manna, and quail rain from the sky. Every day, they'd go out and collect that day's rations, and only that day's rations. Any extra they tried to collect would end up full of maggots in the morning. But on the sixth day, God commanded them to gather twice as much so they wouldn't work to get their food on the seventh day. Like the Israelites tended to do, tended to do in the Old Testament, some didn't listen and they would get hungry on the Sabbath because they didn't collect enough the day, the day before. So God wants us to trust him and he'll be there and he'll provide for us no matter what, even if we don't work one day of the week. Sometimes life can cause us to disconnect from the purpose we were created for. Our purpose. We weren't created for our ability to produce. We were created first and foremost for God. On the Sabbath, we are just supposed to enjoy God and his gifts. It's one day to be rather than to do. There were also practical reasons God commanded rest on the Sabbath. As previously, as previously mentioned, those who work without taking a day's break will encounter physical exhaustion and breakdowns. We're not meant to work nonstop. And when we work uh, seven days a week, we exhaust our brain, so its creative functions can't work properly. And because of this, we become more stressed and wear ourselves out to the point where we become susceptible to more illnesses. No other society in ancient times took a day off because survival was, a, was always a day-to-day, season-to-season affair. But God commanded his people to take a Sabbath because he wanted to remind them that he bore the truth, the, the true responsibility of providing for them. God has set up the world so that most of the provision we experience comes from the work that we do. And because of this, we can very easily begin to assume that we are the ones who bear the responsibility of taking, our, to, of taking care of ourselves. Like the other ancient cultures, we don't think we can take a day off because our lives depend on being on every day of the week. But that kind of responsibility is not ours. God bears that responsibility. So we take a day off each week to declare that. Sabbath is a counter-cultural de uh, declaration of trust. We don't rest because everything is done. We rest because God has promised that if we do it, he'll make up for the rest. For this reason, God knows our capabilities and wants us to take the day off to not only praise his name. He wants us to free our minds and bodies from everyday labors, even just for one day. 
if all we do if all we do is work and do nothing but work there's a good chance that we develop a mentality where we replace work as our source of livelihood and not God himself the second place the sabbath is discussed is in Deuteronomy 5:12 to 15 observe the sabbath day to keep it holy you shall remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God brought you out from there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. The Sabbath gave the Israelites space to reflect on their salvation and the fact that God had accomplished their greatest need, deliverance from sin all by himself. The Israelites did not make one single contribution to the Exodus, so Moses is saying that if God took care of your greatest need all by himself, don't you think you can trust him to take care of your day-to-day -day needs now? As they trusted, they were to reflect on their new relationship with God. In Egypt, they had been slaves. Now they were sons and daughters. They had been under the, rule, the cruel reign of Pharaoh. Now they were under the tender care of their father and they could trust him. So what this is saying is um, we take... We take the day off. We take the Sabbath off, so so we get to know him more, and we can trust him more. That's exactly that's essentially what it's saying. So yeah. Thank you guys. Thank you for participating. Um, so yes, I hope you guys learned a lot about rest today, and also. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your Sabbath. Um, before we leave, um, we're going to have Rev have our closing prayer. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and thank you for the Sabbath day that you've given to us so that we can rest. And I pray that, that we do rest and we take full advantage of it. And help us to continue to have faith that you'll continually provide for us. I pray this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thank you for participating. Thank you. Happy Sabbath, Thank everyone. Thank you. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. 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 Sabbath.